Hello. In this video, we'll look at the conclusive part of investment appraisal. And here I'll be talking about risk and uncertainty. And I'm sure you will agree with me that we need to look at this. As finance manager, we want to make returns, we plan, we do forecast. You know, if you look at all the series of net present value calculations we've been done, we've been doing, you will realize that it's all about projecting cash flows into the future and discounting back to present value and calculating NPV to see whether it's positive or it's negative. If it's positive, we'll do the investment. If it's negative, we say we don't do investment. However, there is nobody on earth that can predict the future 100%. So there is always an element of risk. There is always an element of uncertainty. But before I go into even further discussion, do you understand the difference between the two? Yeah, because both of them just means that the outcome might not likely be the, the, the plan, right? So if they ask you what is the difference, there is just one major difference between the two. And the major difference is the fact that risk can be quantified whereas a certainty cannot be quantified so only risk can be quantified and that is why the focus will always be on risk because for uncertainty we cannot quantify it so we can manage it so we'll focus on managing risk and if you ask me why do we have to manage risk why why is it important like i said it's just because we plan a lot we forecast a lot but our plan will never be the same as the actual it can be significantly different it can be slightly different and can be anything but what you want to do is to make sure that your plan is as close as actual and that's why you need to manage it. Because if you don't manage it, it can be so, so, so different and can actually make all your plan so messy. And you don't want to be that kind of finance manager. So you want to make sure your plan is as close as possible to your actual. And why is it that plan is not always equal to actual? There are two major reasons yeah, why risk is so much of significance the first is the fact that our investment is always a long-term investment and over these years to come you cannot tell what's going to happen nobody saw covid coming so that long term is always there and when you consider the long-term nature of investment you know series of activities series of events will happen that can make your plans not to be the same as actual and likewise you think about the fact that the outflow is always today which means you invest today so you lose money today. And when you lose money today, with anticipation of inflows, not coming today, but rather inflows in future. So that is the element of risk because you are taking risk on future inflows by losing money today. So that is risk. And also the fact that you don't get all your money back today, you get it over a long period of time is a risk. So all of these are your, con con uh, are your co uh, component of the risk that we've been talking about. Now we must manage it as we've seen it because we want our plan to be as close to the actual as much as possible. And that is why we now talk about how. How do we manage this risk? There are different methods we can use to manage the risk. Different methods. And I'll mention about five of them. Yeah, the first one is talk about the expected value method. We'll talk about the sensitivity analysis. You can use I'm going to explain all of this. Sensitivity analysis is another way to manage risk. You can also use adjusted this country. Remember what this country means. This country is just your cost of capital. So you can use adjusted this country. You can as well use adjusted or you call it payback, discounted or you call it 
the discounted payback method. I, I, I remember, I think we touched on that when we're talking about uh, discounted cash flow method. We spoke about uh, this particular method of uh, calculating the returns or benefit from investment opportunities. So adjusted payback period, yeah, which is usually discounted. And the fifth one is you can use simulation. So these are five methods of managing risk in investment appraisal. I think this is the biggest part that we're going to spend so much time, I mean, considerable amount of time on. <coughs> so <coughs> I'll keep this one. Yeah, if we don't have enough time today, I'll do it as a separate video. So I'll keep this one for now. Let me quickly explain the other four. Yeah, so for adjusted discount rate. Actually, what you're just saying here is sometimes you have cost of capital of the company. However, <clears throat> if you are going into an investment, yeah, if that company wants to go into an investment that has different risk, With different risk venture which means different industry if you remember you need to calculate a new cost of capital yeah so you need a new or what you call the adjusted cost of capital and that is why we spoke about the gearing if you remember the video that one of the video where i addressed this one and you gear back by adjusting your beta Remember, we dealt with when you dig here, what you will get is the asset beta. And when you get back at the real financial risk, you get the project specific because you will have adjusted the beta. beta. Then, when you now use the project specific beta in your cost of equity formula of RF plus beta into RM minus RF. In that case, you use this KE for your work, and that is your adjusted percentage. And that is what this is talking about. You are managing risk because you have tried to use a very closely related beta to determine your discounting rate. Yeah, so that is adjusted discount rate. And adjusted payback method We've dealt with that in one of the videos as well. That's, I spoke about it, I remember, where I told you you have to discount your cash flows to get the present value before you calculate the payback. And for simulation, simulation is usually... Simulation, this can also be tested, but most likely just in theory. And that's just a way to say you are able to predict the future is a way of predicting the future and how do you predict the future there are different techniques you can use but usually you use computer-based techniques it's not done manually yeah so there are computer-based uh, model or techniques you can use an example is if you use what we call the monte carlo simulation yeah so computer you just playing with the variables and checking what are the possible outcomes that can come if one variable changes you know you get different outcomes and that's what simulation is all about right so I've explained this I've explained this I've explained this the fourth one is expected value which here you can be expected to also do calculation <laughs> so it's expected value mode method and what is this talking about is because you know that something is not sure does not mean that you don't have possibilities. So it's about working with possibilities. And that is why this works with probability. Probability. Yeah? Probability or likelihood of occurrence. Yeah? What is the probability that something will happen? Yeah? So this works with probability and the possible outcome. So take for instance, 
if you know that for you to be able to sell to make 100 million dollars is not 100 percent sure however you know that there is 50 percent chance of even making 120 million there is 30 percent chance of making 100 million and there is 20 percent chance of making just 20 million what this means is that you cannot just say because fifty percent chance is the highest, then you will work with one twenty million. Then you might be moving so far away from your actual. In that case, you can use what we call the expected value model, which is equals to probability multiplied by the outcome. So in this case, the expected value you should be using for revenue is not one hundred million, but rather it will not be fifty percent. Multiply by 120, which is probability times outcome, plus the next probability times the outcome that can happen, plus the final probability. Because all the probabilities must equal to 100%. Yeah, and that's 60 plus 30 plus 20% of 20 is, I think that's 4. Right, 4, yes. And that gives you a total of 94. So, which means if you want to project your cash flow for that particular year, you should be using $94 and not $100 million. Not 120 not 100 not 20 but rather $94 million. That is what Expedia model is looking at to say, okay, I'm just going to try and bring you to the actual as much as possible by averaging all the possibilities and the outcomes. And that is what expected value model is talking about so that is it for risk and uncertainty uh in the next video i will deal with sensitivity analysis as a separate topic and we're going to solve one or two questions on it until then bye now